हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल डॉक्टर एम फाइज टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टीच यू जीटीटी व्हिच इज ग्लूकोज टॉलरेंस टेस्ट एंड देयर आर टू टाइप ऑफ जीटीटी वन इज ओरल ग्लूकोज टॉलरेंस टेस्ट एंड सेकंड इज इंट्रावेनस ग्लूकोज टॉलरेंस टेस्ट सो व्हाट आर द इंडिकेशन फॉर द जीटीटी सो If somebody is obese, अगर कोई बंदे का weight बहुत ज़्यादा है so we should go for the GTT. Second criteria for going for the GTT is recurrent skin infection. फॉर गोइंग फॉर द जी टी टी इज रिकरेंट स्किन इन्फेक्शन किसी बंदे को बार बार स्किन इन्फेक्शन हो रहा है और हमें पता ही नहीं चल रहा है कि रीज़न क्या है इन स्पाइट ऑफ गेटिंग ऑल द डायग्नोसिस डन तो हम उसका ग्लूकोज टॉलरेंस टेस्ट करेंगे टू फाइंड आउट वेदर ही इज डायबिटिक और नॉट द थर्ड इज जेनेटिक प्रीडिस्पोजिशन कोई बंदे को फादर मदर या फोर फादर डायबिटिक है और क्रॉनिक डायबिटिक है कोई ज़्यादा प्रॉब्लम थी उनके लाइफ में तो हम लोग उसको पहले से जी टी टी करके प्रोफेलेक्ट्रिकली जान जाएंगे कि वो डायबिटीज़ है कि नहीं उसको द फोर्थ इज फाइनल इज प्रेगनेंसी सो इन हाई रिस्क प्रेगनेंसी वी ऑल्सो डू द ग्लूकोज टॉलरेंस टेस्ट एंड दिस इज कॉल्ड Uh, when somebody is suffering for gestational diabetes so what is the clinical significance for glucose tolerance test so if we have to find out the glucose intolerance if somebody is suffering from a borderline uh, diabetes mellitus that means he has some fasting and postprandial value increase just borderline uh, which is close to the normal range somebody is having unexplained type of hypertriglyceridemia a per person is continuously having a high tg value and we are not able to diagnose what is the reason so then we will go for the gtt to find out whether he is triglycemic because of the diabetes or some other reason neuropathy neuropathy is also one of the criteria to get the uh, gtt done importance if somebody is having importance of a known reason then we have to find out uh, diabetes mellitus by considering the gtt test renal glycosuria same thing and gdm gdm is gestational diabetes so, so if someone is having a family history of gdm or previous pregnancy of gdm then we will go for the ogtt retinopathy or the last but not the least is dm like renal disease and what is renal glycosuria renal glycosuria is when somebody is non diabetic and non hyperglycemic but he is having a sugar in the urine so what are the guidelines to perform the gt test it's very simple you have to follow the criteria which is laid by the world health organization or the american college of obstetrician and gynecologist so you don't have to restrict your carbohydrate diet 3 days prior to the test that means you have to continue eating normal diet 3 days before the test you don't have to restrict about anything second you don't have to eat or drink or smoke or exercise 8 to 10 hours before the test because the first test should be taken in fasting condition the third is all medication which is been i mean you are using or can affect the blood sugar level you have to stop 3 days prior to the investigation so what is the procedure of ogtt actually there is two type of procedure which we follow one is to diagnose the diabetes mellitus and the second is to diagnose the gestational diabetes so you have to keep in mind that which type of diagnosis you are going to make if the patient is non pregnant female or male and we are suspecting diabetes related disease then we will go for the ogt ogt test which will be performed by two sample which is fasting and after 2 hours of the intake of 75 g of glucose 
whereas in the gestational diabetes we have to take three sample or four sample according to the american diabetic association or the acog it depends which criteria you are following so in in gestational diabetes we will take a fasting sample and after giving the glucose of 75 g we will take after an hour and after an 2 hour or 3 hour depending which type of criteria we are following and this will i discuss in detail just later on so there is a procedure of injection of glucose also so when you come to the laboratory in the fasting condition you have to take 75 g of glucose and dissolve in 300 ml of water and take in a 5 minutes and after an hour you will go for the first sample if you are going for the gestational diabetes and after a 2 hour or 3 hour but if you are not going for the gestational diabetes and you are going for diabetes mellitus then you have to give a sample after 2 hours of the ingestion of glucose in case of children there is a criteria of 1.75 g of glucose per kg body weight but it should not be exceeding 75 of glucose for diagnosing gestational diabetes uh, which is gdm we follow two criterias one is one step criteria the second is two step criteria so this is recommended by ada which is american diabetic association and this is recommended by acog american college of obstetrician and gynecologist so in the first step strategy for the diagnostic gdm we follow the glucose intake criteria as in diabetes mellitus which we which is we tell patient to take 75 g of glucose so he takes 75 g gram of glucose and we of course take the sample for fasting and then we will take the sample after 1 hour and we will take the sample for after 2 hour so what should be the result which will tell us that the patient is whether gestational diabetic or non gestational diabetic so if the fasting value of the sample or the patient comes equal to 95 mg per dl or more then she is a gestational diabetic and if 1 hour is more than 180 and 2 hour is 155 mg per dl and this is a criteria for ada that is american diabetic association but here there is a catch you must know and understand that among all three it's not required to come in a increasing state if any one of this either this or either this or either this that means if even if the fasting or one hour or two through two hour any of them comes beyond the range the patient is gestational gestational diabetic for example if patient has a normal one hour sample and normal two hour but fasting is more than 95 she is gestational diabetic or if fasting and one hour is normal range but 2 hour is more than 155 then she is gestational diabetic what does it mean it means any of the value increasing the normal range will consider patient as a gestational diabetic now there is a two step criteria this was the one step criteria or strategy the other one is two step criteria and this is recommended by the acog so what is first step and what is second step so actually this is just to avoid the 
non invasive process because one step is considerable lesser invasive than the two step so what we do in the first step we give the patient 50 gram of glucose but remember for this test you don't have to consider the patient fasting she will come in a random state and we will give her 50 gram of glucose and after taking the 50 gram of glucose we take the sample after one hour so if the value comes to 140 or more then the patient is considered to be gestational diabetic and the two step criteria is when this comes to positive then we can go for the second step if this comes negative then we can stop here and we don't we will not go for this step should not be followed so what is the two step second step that is we give the patient not 75 gram of glucose but the 100 gram of glucose and we take 1 2 3 4 four samples here according to ADA we, we had been taking three samples here we take four samples so the, the but the criteria is more or less same like fasting here 95 here is also 95 one hour is 180 here is 180 two hour 155 here is also 155 but the last cry, uh, it additional sampling will be done after three hour and that is less or more than one if it is equal or more than 140 mg then she will be considered as a gestation diabetic but again here also the same thing either of the value either of the value if gets increased then she will be considered as gestational diabetic so there is three laboratory diagnostic criteria we follow one is as per the who the second is ada and third is of course the acog so if the fasting condition and the fasting value comes less than 110 this is normal and if it comes more than 110 and less than 126 this is impaired glucose tolerance and if it is more than or equal to 126 of course the values are milligram per dl it is diabetes clear cut diabetes mellitus so if the two hour sample value comes less than 140 milligram per dl this is normal and if it is more than 140 but less than 200 it is again impaired glucose tolerance and if it is more than 200 or equal to 200 it is of course clear cut diabetes mellitus the criteria for ada is somewhat different uh, first of all we consider with the ingestion of 75 gram of glucose i told you that in ada we Three take sample. the fasting one hour two hour so fasting should be equal to or less than 92 if it is more than or equal to 92 it is gestation diabetes if one hour more than or equal to 180 it is gestation diabetes again two hour sample if it is more or equal to 150 it is a gestation diabetes whereas the ACG criteria is slightly different so the the second step criteria which I have explained you is considered to be uh, done with 100 gram of glucose so the fasting value should be if it is more than equal to 95 here it is 92 so it's a slight difference because we are taking 100 gram of glucose so one hour is equal to or more than 180 then she will be diabetic uh, gestation diabetic here also the one hour is 180 two hour should be equal or more than 155 here it is 153 and the last and final value which is followed by the SUG is 
थ्री आवर सो द फाइनल वन इज थ्री आवर सैम्पल सो इफ द वैल्यू कम्स मोर और इक्वल टू वन फोर्टी एम जी पर डी एल शी विल बी कंसिडर एज ए जस्टिशनल डायबिटीज सो दीज आर द थ्री क्राइटेरिया विच वी फॉलो वाइल डायग्नोस्टिंग द जस्टिशनल डायबिटीज आई होप यू हैव अंडरस्टूड द जी टी टी एंड आई विल ऑल्सो शो यू द ओ जी टी टी ग्राफ नाउ एंड आई विल ऑल्सो गिव यू द टेबल एंड द चार्ट विच इज बीन कंसिडर्ड बाई द डब्ल्यू एच ओ एंड ए डी ए थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर योर अटेंशन आई विल सी यू वेरी सीन इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर हैव ए गुड डे